Webster Hills and welcome to online worship. We're so glad you could join us here today. Well, we are a church that is on a mission. Say it with me, to follow Jesus and change the world. We can do that by taking a moment and inviting people to join us for worship. Share this experience online, send an email and invite a friend. We would love to get to know them a little more. Well, down below, you'll notice that we have a place that you can fill out the connect card. Please take a moment and do that. We'd love to know that you worshiped here with us today. There's also a place to give and view the bulletin. Finally, you can check out all of our family ministry resources down below as well. Well, Webster Hills, have an amazing week. Good morning, Webster Groves. My name is Peggy Billow, and I will be leading the call to worship. If you would please join me. Creator spirit, bring new life where we are worn and tired. New love, where we have turned hard-hearted. Forgiveness, where we hurt and are wounded. And the joy and freedom of your holy presence, where we are prisoners of ourselves. Creator Spirit, in the space of our small heart and in silence, come close that we may dream Hello and welcome to our worship service online. I invite you to join me in singing our opening song, Let's Sing Together, Canticle of the Turning. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You your sign on your servant's polite, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you were in, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame, and to those who would for you yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to flight, where the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, of the fires of your of power. 
fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. Let the king beware, for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more for the food they could never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day. From age to age, we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's crushing grasp. The saving word that our forebears heard is the promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and the rod can be crushed by God who is turning our world around. My heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. And the world is about to turn. And the world is about to Have something a little different for our prayer time today and I hope you'll join me as we pray together. Unitarian minister Reverend Teresa Soto writes, all of us need all of us to make it. I want to invite you to make those words your prayer this morning. All of us need all of us to make it. Say it with me loud or soft. All of us need all of us to make it. In a world where some of us are targeted for struggle and brutality, where others of us benefit and flourish, we pray, all of us need all of us to make it. In a world where powerful people of ill will and indifference make us fearful for our safety and for our futures, we pray, all of us need all of us to make it. In the excruciating space that lives between seeing and naming and hearing and changing, we pray. All of us need all of us to make it. Make a picture in your mind of someone you aren't very happy with right now. Look at their face in your mind and pray. All of us need all of us to make it. We as United Methodists believe that all of us need all of us to make it. This is why we are in solidarity with the movement for Black Lives today and every day. Amen. My life flows on in endless song, a perverse land.
Webster Hills. I'm Kyle Cranes Rutz. Uh oh, Elijah. And we are so glad you're joining us for our children's moment. This month we continue to talk about faith. And today we're going to talk about faith when we're being fearful. Elijah, what does it mean to have fear? It means you're scared of something. Yeah, it means you're scared of something. And today the person we're going to talk about is Peter, who is a little fearful to get out of a boat and walk on water with Jesus. So, Elijah, what's something that you're afraid of? I'm scared of snakes. Yeah, snakes can be super scary, can't they? Yeah. Sometimes they're slimy, you might think they're gonna bite you. Yeah. I can kind of be scared of snakes sometimes too. Well, sometimes people are afraid of monsters under the bed. Do you have a monster that lives under your bed? No. No. Do monsters really live under your bed? No. No, totally silly. And sometimes people are scared of... Spiders. Spiders. Are you scared of spiders? Yeah. Uh, I'm not so scared of spiders. I like spiders because they help in my garden, and they get the bad bugs out of there, and mosquitoes that like to give you itchy bumps, right? Sometimes people are even scared of things that are meant to be funny or silly, like a... Clown. Clown. I'm not scared of clowns, but I can understand why sometimes people are. Well, Elijah, there's lots of things to be scared of, trying new things, falling, but God is always with us. And our faith says that even though we can't see God, he's always there and always with us. So when you're feeling scared or uncertain, you could just take a moment, take a deep breath, Maybe close your eyes and pray for a minute. And just ask God to let you know that God's with you. And I bet a peace will come. And you know what it makes me think of, Elijah? What? One of my favorite Veggie Tales. Do you remember watching Veggie Tales sometimes? They're funny, right? Mm -hmm. Well, one of them is when Junior Asparagus is scared of the monster under his bed. And he finally realizes that he doesn't have to be afraid. And this is what he says. God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than Godzilla and the monsters on TV. Oh, God is bigger than the boogeyman, and he's watching out for you and me. Let's be like Junior Asparagus and know that God is watching out for you and for me. Have a great week, Webster Hills. Good, Good Sunday, Sunday morning, morning, Webster, Webster Hills. Hills. Sue and Ken Wilkie here. Grateful to be worshiping with you during this unusual time for our church. Today, we'd like to share with you an invitation to offering we found, inspired by Psalm 65. This is how the earth praises God, giving thanks for God's abundance. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks, and the valleys deck themselves with shimmering fields of grain, sharing their bounty with the rest of creation. We too are to worship God by being abundant and fruitful with our lives, offering up our yields as if they were songs of joyful praise. Let us worship God with, with all our, our gifts. gifts. One of the things I love about Broadway musicals and stage plays is that so often we find ourselves in the characters or the people that we're seeing on stage and we find ourselves living their story. And this song is especially true for me. I love the lyrics of this uh, whole show, but especially this song. So I'd like to share with you this song that could mean a variety of things, but I know that it means something to a lot of our people in our congregation. And so whatever way you want to take these words, I hope that the Spirit will guide you in that and that it'll be a blessing to you. So this is from the musical Dear Evan Hansen, and the song is called You Will Be Found. like nobody was there Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere Have you ever felt like you could disappear Like you could fall and no one would hear So lonely feeling wash away Maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay Cause when you don't feel strong enough to stand You can 
when you're broken on the ground you will be found so let the sun come streaming in cause you'll reach up and you'll rise again lift your head and look around you will be Almighty God, we offer our gifts and gratitude this morning, not just for what you do in our lives, but for who you are in our lives. You are with us in the person of the Father, the God above us. You come to meet us as the Son, as God beside us. You empower us to do the work of kingdom building by the Holy Spirit, God within us providing strength and boldness that we would never find on our own. May these gifts be tools that make the transformation of the world a reality. We pray in the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. My name is Paul Strobel. Our scripture lesson this morning is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Right then, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side of the lake while he dismissed the crowds. When he sent them away, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Evening came, and he was alone. Meanwhile, the boat, fighting a strong headwind, was being battered by the waves and was already far away from land. Very early in the morning, he came to his disciples walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost! They were so frightened, they screamed. Just then, Jesus spoke to them, Be encouraged! It's me! Don't be afraid! Peter replied, Lord, if it's you, order me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come! Then Peter got out of the boat and was walking on the water toward Jesus. But when Peter saw the strong wind, he became frightened. As he began to sink, he shouted, Lord, rescue me. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him, saying, You man of weak faith, why did you begin to have doubts? When they got into the boat, the wind settled down. Those in the boat worshipped Jesus and said, You must be God's son. We give thanks to God for the gift of Scripture. Thank you. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. When we are gathered for worship and sharing communion with one another, we say those words. And our faith teaches us that Christ is not only alive, but Christ will come to live with us again. We speak of the day when God's kingdom will come to earth. 
We often focus so much of our decision to be followers of Jesus by wanting some sort of eternal reward that we forget that part of our life together means that we're working. We're working toward that day when the kingdom of God will be right here with us and Christ will come again. The question's been asked when Christ returns, will you know him, recognize him? If you passed him on the street, could you look into his face and say, yeah, that's Jesus. Recognize him any day, even with a face mask. We don't have any pictures of the actual Jesus. We have to remember sometimes that the images that we may have grown up with do not look anything like Jesus actually looked. Fair skin, blue eyes, light brown hair. Kind of leaves us in the same place as the disciples that night when they saw Jesus walking across a stormy sea toward their boat. They didn't recognize him. In fact, they were pretty sure what they were seeing was a ghost, not Jesus, but something to fear. And here is where the story gets most interesting. Jesus speaks to them, says, be encouraged. It's me, don't be afraid. Now you might think having just been with Jesus when 5,000 people were fed, starting with just a little bit of fish and bread, that they would have been ready to believe that Jesus could walk toward them on water. I mean, you pull off one miracle, why not two? And quite frankly, in their time with them, there had been other examples of Jesus doing some pretty spectacular things. I wonder if they looked at each other in the boat and said, do you think it's really Jesus? I don't know, do you think it's really Jesus? Until Peter finally asks for a bit of proof and says, Lord, if it's you, order me to come to you on the water and Jesus answers with one word, come. Isn't it interesting that instead of saying to Jesus, walk on over here so we can get a better look at you, Jesus says, if it's you, invite me to join you. There are times in our lives when we wonder, is it Jesus asking us to go somewhere or do something, or is it just our own imagination at work? And too often, I think, we may be willing to ignore the invitation and decide to stay in the safety of our boats, because how can we know it's Jesus appearing to us in the middle of a storm? Well, maybe it's because Jesus rarely asks us to do something easy and safe, that Jesus is not one to say, stay over there where you've got a pretty good idea of what's going to happen next, Jesus isn't one who says, stick with the way you've always done it, because at least then you'll know what is most likely to happen. No, what Jesus says is, even if you are uncertain, and if you can't quite get your focus, come. Walk into the storm and join me. Come and see what your faith can do. Come and let's figure out how to dial it in and turn this world upside down. Jesus calls. Jesus calls you and me to step out of the boat and into the unknown. Boldly and confidently, Jesus calls, come with me. I'll show you the way and I'll rescue you when you lose your focus and you start to sink. Now, we often read the story of Peter joining Jesus on the waves and use it to poke a little fun at this impulsive disciple scrambling out of the boat only to be overcome with fear and that need to be rescued. How embarrassing for Peter. But Jesus was there and Jesus did reach out and rescue him. And if he had not jumped out of the boat, he never would have had the chance to know what he was capable of doing, nor would he have been able to have such a personal experience of being pulled from danger by the hand of Jesus. Now, we know Peter made more than a few missteps along the way as he journeyed with Jesus. He also became the disciple upon whom Jesus started what we now call the church. Peter was willing to risk. He was willing to fumble about. He was willing to make mistakes, but he did so all while hearing Jesus' invitation, come, join me out here where there are waves and wind, and let's see what can be done. The story begins with Jesus making the disciples get in the boat and start to sail across the water while he dismisses the crowds that he has just fed. 
And it makes you wonder if it was all planned that Jesus wanted the disciples to go to a place where they would be vulnerable and maybe afraid and caught up in that work of navigating through a storm and thinking they had to do it all on their own. I'm sure the journey started out peacefully enough. I've been told that this particular body of water is known for having storms pop up with little warning. We're all a bit like those disciples, are we not? We prefer to go through life in a calm way. We invest a good deal into making our lives stable and secure, both for ourselves and those we love. And there's nothing wrong with that, really. But so often, when life gets too easy, we forget about our need for God. We think we have everything under control. We ignore God calling us into something new, some new learning, some new understanding, some new experience. And why? Well, we think we've got everything covered. And then pandemic happens and our lives are disrupted or we begin to understand how some parts of our world suffer more than others or images of injustice are played on repeat on our screens. And we say, Lord, if you are really calling me to do something about any of this, I'm gonna need a little bit of proof. Friends, we need God at all times. And the good news is that when life is the most distressing, God is very much available to us. And for some of us, that means we call on God for safety and comfort in times of distress and grief. And for others, that means we listen when we hear Jesus say, come. Peter's faith was made stronger that day. He jumped, he walked on water with Jesus, and he did let his fear overcome him, and Jesus saved him. In just a few moments in time, Peter lived out the entirety of our gospel story. Jesus calls you out, gives you the ability to do amazing things, and when you need him the most, he pulls you out of the deep and keeps you safe. If we were worshiping in either our sanctuary or chapel right now, I might point you toward the structures of the spaces and how the beams are reminders of what the bottom of a boat might look like turned upside down, how we have images in our windows of boats and anchors. We can find security in some of these images. We're in a boat together with one another and with Jesus, and it's a good place to be. But if we look out beyond the safety of this place, we might also see Jesus out there in the waves where life is stormy and unpredictable and maybe not altogether safe. Can we hear Jesus say, come? Come and walk with me. Come and let me show you what you can do. Come to where it is possible for us to see together the depth of the storm and the ways we can work together to bring calm for all who cry out for it. See me, follow me, know me, remember me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Madison Damon, and I'm the Family Ministry Coordinator here at Webster Hills. And welcome to Family Q. Family Q is a time where we dive a little bit deeper and you walk away with your next steps in faith. Our theme this month is faith, believing in what you can't see because of what you can see. Today, our story is from Mark. Jesus made his disciples get into a boat ahead of him on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. He sent the crowds away and went up to the mountainside to be alone and pray. The boat the disciples were on was already a long way away from the land and was being pounded by waves and very strong winds. Before dawn, Jesus went to join the disciples. He walked out onto the lake. The disciples saw him and were instantly terrified. It's a ghost, they cried. Jesus called out, be brave, it is I. Don't be afraid. Then Peter asked, Lord, is it really you? If it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come. Peter got off the boat and started walking towards Jesus on the water. But when Peter felt the wind, he was afraid and he began to sink. Save me, Lord, help me, Peter cried out. 
Jesus instantly reached out his hand and caught Peter. Your faith is so small, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back in the boat, the disciples said, You really are the Son of God. Peter took a big leap of faith when he stepped out on the boat. Literally. The bottom line this week is knowing Jesus can help you face your fears. Jesus is always with us in our strongest times and in our weakest. This week, I challenge you to think about a time when you were scared to do something, but you followed through. Send us a video and tell us about it. How did you feel afterwards? What did you learn from it? Send us pictures and videos of you completing this challenge to this email and send them to us by Friday so we can share your pictures and videos with everybody. Have an awesome week, guys. I hope you'll join me in singing as we close our worship today. Let's sing the great spiritual soon and very soon. take with us to be blessed in the week that comes. It's right here in front of us in the simple words of the text. Jesus saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. We are blessed to recognize you, O Lord Jesus, in the tumultuous goings on of our world today. Take heart, Christ is with us. Do not be afraid. Amen. Amen.